ان الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم uh, the title of this session is uh, the grave bliss bliss or torment in the grave that's from the book chapter number five and uh, this is supposed to be a serious course inshallah ta'ala so i'm not sure if you guys are here without writing anything without having the book i'm not sure how much of that information would stay with you when it comes to sessions of of knowledge you know usually we have to make sure that we write things down uh, so that we can study it. It's different than listening to a reminder uh, or something. MashaAllah, everything is good, alhamdulillah. Even if a person is sitting just for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be blessed, to be in the masjid, in the gatherings where the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned, ayat al Quran, a hadith of the Prophet, والسلام, that is enough and sufficient blessings, alhamdulillah. But to take oneself to a different level, and that is to write down things to make sure that you're going to study. And uh, I've heard that there's a, a test. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all pass the real test, which is the life that we live in. Uh, hopefully, inshallah ta'ala, we can cover the major points that are mentioned in this chapter. Bliss or torment in the grave. Adabu al-qabr wa na'imuhu. The punishment in the grave or the uh, delight in the grave. Um, there are so many different things that we can talk about when it comes to the subject of Adab al-Qabr wa Na'im. And it's always mixture between, which is there's no actually separation between both uh, matters of uh, knowledge and facts and the effect of it and the admonition of it to our hearts. So when we talk about the hereafter, we're not talking about things that we're trying to please one another. We need to be upon the truth, upon the haqq. And for someone to make us fear uh, a healthy way so that we uh, protect ourselves from what we're fear of, better than someone that makes us feel secure and then he deceives us to lead us astray. So to understand the reality of things with matters of unseen, this is what affected the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. Because of that, I would like to start with, there's an author from Uthman ibn Affan, radiallahu anhu, and his mawla, he mentioned that, that he would observe that every time Uthman ibn Affan, radiallahu anhu, be by a grave, he would cry and weep to the extent of which that his beard will be wet. But if the, uh, the talk is about Jannah, how fire, things like this, that doesn't happen the same way. It's just this scene, whenever he sees him by the grave, the graveyard or by a grave, Uthman anhu would weep a lot. So he asked him and he expressed this, why you are different when you are by a grave versus something else. So he explained to him that this is the first stage. And uh, whoever pass from this level of the grave basically, if, it's, if he's saved from it, what comes after it, it's much easier for it, for that person. And if he's punished, what comes after it, it's far worse for the person. So this is the beginning or the first stage after death, where it's going to be either a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or a delight. And that's why Al-Qabr imma hufra min hufar al-nar aw rawda min riyad al-jannah. It's either a pit from the fire or a garden from jannah. And as we heard many, many times, uh, yes, it brings the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our hearts, but when a person faces it, finally he gets to see it. People are split into two groups, the believers versus the disbelievers. If it's a believer, the most delightful thing for that believer is whatever he's in after this life. is more delight for him than this life that we're living from the moment of death onward. And the angels and the glad tidings that the believers would receive and for the person to be in a state, rawda min riyad al a garden of Jannah. So what is better than that for a person to be in versus punishment 
that is also no comparison whatsoever with any pain that a person faces in this world, the punishment in the year after is the real punishment and one of which is the grief. So it's a serious matter and that's why we should bring these realities into our hearts and to make sure that our actions are according to it and to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, there are certain points which, first of all, matters of aqidah. This is a matter of belief. The grave, there's a punishment or rewards that a person would observe in the punishment, in the grave. And the reason why we say this is aqidah, there is the major points of aqidah of being a Muslim versus a disbeliever, for example, like the six pillars of al-Iman, this is very obvious. But also there is the aspects of aqidah, which is very important to note. There's an as aspect of aqidah that makes a person from the people of Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah to save yourself from the deviations within those who uh, attribute themselves to the deen of al-Islam. Right? We know that the Prophet والسلام, he said, وَسَتَفْتَرِقُ أُمَّتِي عَلَى ثَلَاثٍ وَسَبْعِينَ فِرْقَ My ummah, my people will split into 73 sects. كُلُّ أَفِنَّرُ إِلَّا وَحِدًا all in how far except one day as the Prophet والسلام, what is this one? He said in many narrations, one of which Ma ana ali wa ashab al what me and my companions are upon today. So the ulama when they made the books of aqidah that you guys, mashaAllah, always learn and we have to learn our aqidah like Usul Sunnah by Imam Muhammad and others, this is you won't find all of the pillars of Al Iman in it. It does not include every aspect of aqidah in it. It only includes mainly as the Ramad, they say, al to perfect your aqidah. After being a Muslim, after for a, for, a, for a person to be guided to the deen of Islam, he needs another guidance to be upon the haq in every detail of it. And that's why we need to learn the matters of aqidah that makes a person among the people of Ahl Sunnah and Jama'ah. One of the things that you would find them mentioned in the books of aqidah like that is the issue of the adab or the delight, the punishment or the delight in the grave. Because some deviant sects, they denied it. So from the aspect of aqidah, they denied it because they have corruptions in certain foundations of the deen. One of which is uh, they don't go by the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ because most of the evidence is when it comes to what's in the grave is in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. The hadith is mutawatira, is uh, abundance. There's no doubt in it whatsoever. So those who would deny this, they say there's nothing explicit in the Qur'an, even though there are evidences in the Qur'an that talks about the punishment or the delight in the grave, or the reward in the grave, but it's not explicit as they want it to be. Uh, but one of the very obvious answers to this is, as it's also, I saw this mentioned in the book, that uh, who said that we only go by what's in the Qur'an? So this is a, a point that they don't have anyway to start with. This is mufaraqa. Here this is, you find yourself in separate place when someone try to argue with you, saying, where is the evidence in the Qur'an? And Ibn Abatta and others in the early generations of Islam, they made this a very clear statement. Whoever asks you only for evidence in the Qur'an, if he's ignorant, doesn't know the rulings of things, he's a deviant person in his understanding. Why? Because this deen is not just Qur'an. Jibreel alayhi salam would come down to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam with two things. Al-Qur'an was sunnah. As Hassan ibn Atiyah rahimahullah he said. So he would come down with the Qur'an and the Qur'an is the miraculous words of Allah. Karamullah in Mu'ajiz. We seek rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by reciting it and so on. And the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, his speech, his actions, what he approved of, still wahi, revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whoever has a dispute in this, then we go back first to finish and take care of that dispute before we go forward, right? So the evidence is, is in both the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, but it's more and many of them in the Hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. And some verses in the Qur'an that you would find mentioned in the Qur'an about the angels beating the backs of those who disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they take their soul in the ladina tawaffahum wa ikha dhalimi anfusihim. Those who the angels, they take their souls Zalimi and Fusim, those who even refused to migrate when they had the means and they chose to be oppressed and as a result of that they were not upon the deen. So uh, the verse talks about the moment when their souls are taken and also the disbelievers, Yadribuna Wujuha Mu'adivarahum, they will beat their faces and their backs. So this is mentioned in the Quran. Also Fir'aun. Fir'aun, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Zumar about the story of Musa and Fir'aun and the 
the, the story of Mu'min Ali Fir'aun, in it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the people of Fir'aun and Fir'aun, النَّارُ يُعْرَضُونَ عَلَيْهَا غُدُوًّا وَعَشِيًّا وَيَوْمَ تَقُومُ السَّاعَةُ أَدْخِلُوا آلَ فِرْعَوْنَ أَشَدَّ الْعَذَابِ And it's very explicit, meaning the hellfire, they are being presented to it in the morning and in the evening, Fir'aun and his people. وَيَوْمَ تَقُومُ السَّاعَةُ And when the hour is going to be established, أَدْخِلُوا آلَ فِرْعَوْنَ أَشَدَّ الْعَذَابِ it will be said, admit the people of Fir'aun to the worst of the punishments. So there's two punishments here. They are being presented to the hellfire every morning and every evening. Since the time they were alive in this world, since they died, till the day of judgment. And that's by itself, subhanAllah, what is this life that we live in? And we have to really work with our hearts. These are actions done by our hearts when we're listening to ayat of the Qur'an or a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, and that's the benefit of the ilm. Those who died, how long they've been in their graves. The Fir'aun, and how, what, he did, what did he do when he was alive, and all the power and all the wealth that he had, and all of this, and now lived for how long? 80, 90 years? And then he's been for thousands of years under the grave, being punished every day in the morning and in the evening. What is this life is worth? There's no, there's no value to it whatsoever. This life that we live in, has no value to it whatsoever unless a person is obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Same thing the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with and they are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 1400, 1300 years and something, they passed away. They are in delight inshallah ta'ala in their graves and their life was very short life. Their patience, their suffering, their struggle, that passed and it's gone. And the same thing, none of us, unless we know someone that passed away from this life. Uh, someone that was, when he was living, if he has the chance to come back, would he like for people to give him more comfort of how beautiful this life is? Or to make them face the reality of this life? Enjoy the real life of this world by being obedient to Allah. And struggle, yes, be patient, yes. If everything that you love in this world is haram for you, which is not the case, so what? It's going to, it's, is it going to be forever? Comparing that to the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in hereafter. Uh, so uh, this, is, uh, this is how the reality of things in this life. And to be patient, and alhamdulillah, actually it's the opposite. The haram is counted things, and it's evil. And the, the most joyful people on the face of earth, really, are the believers. Whoever fears Allah obedient to Allah, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make ways out for him and he would provide for him from where he, where he does not expect. But I say there's always a relationship between the rizq, the provisions, and the ibadah. Those who have no knowledge of the deen of Allah, they would say, oh, that means if I'm obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my numbers of, number of wealth will, will increase. This is not the case. If someone, and they would say there's poor people, Obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they're poor. I don't want to be like them. But what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in the hearts of those who have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the contentment and the happiness and the goodness as rizq, as provisions from, our, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is far more than any wealth can explain or can provide for the person. And it's not a call for a person to be poor, never. But it's a call for us to purify our hearts and to know how things are and what the means and what the objectives in our life and this is a concept that once it's present because we are supposed to be reminded of it as it's also mentioned one of the means to protect ourselves from the punishment of the grave to see how the matter is we're living with it on a daily basis the prophet والسلام, would teach the sahaba radiallahu anhum a dua the same way that they were taught at tashahud we all learn the tashahud and we teach our children at tashahud because of their salah we need to teach them the same way that we teach them the tashahud, this dua also that they would say before the salam and after the tashahud. The last thing before you make salam, to seek refuge in Allah from four things. You know this dua? Something that nobody should miss, whether it's a fard salah or optional salah. It's not fard, it's not a pillar of the salah. It's not from the wajibat of the salah. It's recommended, by that mean, but that means don't leave it because the Prophet ﷺ used to teach it and they would memorize it the same way that they would memorize the tashahud. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min adhab jahannam, wa min adhab al-qabr, wa min fitna al-mahya wal-mamat, wa min sharri fitna al-masih al-dajjal. Four things. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika 
Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you. We should all, mashallah, memorize it. Min adabi jahannam, the punishment of the hellfire, which is the everlasting one. Wa min adabi al-qabr, seeking refuge in Allah from the punishment of the grave. So if, you, if a person only pray the fard, how many times we make this dua? Five times a day. Not one time a day, not one time a month, a week. This is how we're living our life. Right, five times a day, seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the punishment of the grave. And there is the, sec- the third part is also have something to do with the grave. وَمِنْ فِتْنَةٍ مَحْيَا mamat, From the fitna, from the trial of this life and the trial of death. The trial of, of life which we all witness, everything is a trial in our life. And the trial of death from the moment of death and then the angels in the grave, the questioning of the grave that you probably heard before. And that's in the grave. So this is the fitna. And in the grave, those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them steadfastness are the believers. Allah will give steadfastness to those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the, uh, in the grave in whenever they return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's one of the very important concepts in this. There is no more of a strong, there is no stronger mean for a person to be guided for a person to be steadfast, for a person to be saved from the punishment of the grave, for a person to have a good ending of one's life, for the person to be saved from the fire, there's no stronger mean than to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a helpless way. That you don't observe any other mean. You don't see yourself. Seeing yourself meaning you don't observe with your heart that you have the ability to do anything. You're making a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like the dua of al-ghariq. The dua of a drowning person. When someone is drowning, he does not think of any worldly means. He's making dua sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means the, the only help that he would receive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing, no place in the heart for any worldly means. So the same thing when a person making this dua of al muttar the one is in necessity, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's the meaning of al-isti'adha. This is the tawheed. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika. Istaadha is a ibadah that is only to be done to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I seek refuge in you from the punishment of the hellfire, from the punishment of the grave, from the fitna of this life and the fitna of the hereafter, and from the fitna, the trial of al-Masih al-Dajjal. And you heard uh, the, the issues about al-Masih al-Dajjal, the biggest fitna on the face of earth. And there are seed of it. There are some seeds in the hearts. For those who might not witness al-Masih al-Dajjal, but they have the seed of the fitna in their hearts, which we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from that. So, uh, also it's mentioned in the, in the book for a person to be saved from the punishment. Uh, what Shaykh Hussain Tamir rahimahullah, he mentioned, Al-Qayyim also mentioned that in Madarij Salikin and others, looking into the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasalam, uh, certain things, 10 points, which is also important for us to remember uh, to save us from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, you want to see, you, uh, of course we all know this, but you know the reality of things, reality that should hit our hearts, that we all, are you guys with me? We all, no exception, we all deserve to be now fire. Deserve. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala treat us with his justice only. Right? Because we're all sinners. Anyone sinless? After the Prophet والسلام, we're all sinners. And in the court of law, do you go in front of the judge and say, please forgive me, I won't do that again? If you did a, a serious crime, most likely, no. If he treats you with what the law is, he's being just, he's not doing any injustice to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. If he treats the believers, I'm not telling the disbelievers, if he treats subhanahu wa ta'ala, the believers, with his justice, all of them deserve to be in the fire. لا يسألوا عما يفعلوا هم يسألوا. No one is to question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the creator of all things. We are created from nothing. Right? So to know this reality, what would save us from the punishment of Allah? The mercy of Allah. The mercy of Allah. Not the justice of Allah, the mercy of Allah. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. And that's what the Prophet والسلام, he said, لَن يَدْخُلَ أَحَدٌ مِّنْكُمُ الْجَنَّةَ بِعَمَلِهِ None of you will enter Jannah by his actions. 
even though the actions are the means to enter Jannah. But what the Prophet ﷺ meant is that your actions is not the price for Jannah. It's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he would accept these simple actions as the means to enter Jannah. That's what they asked the Prophet ﷺ, Wala anta Rasulullah, not even you, O Messenger of Allah, and he is the most among all of the people th since Adam salam till the Day of Judgment, Atqaqum lillah, the most fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most obedient to Allah, the most in ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he alayhi salatu wasalam still he said, Wala ana, not even myself. Illa an yatagammadani lahu bi rahmatin min, unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covers me with his mercy. So we are all in need of the mercy of Allah. So as a result of that, there are certain things that we need to do. Otherwise, we, if a person dies without doing this, then there are also some means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his mercy uh, that can be the means for the person to be protected from all sins. As we know also that when a person dies, either he's a disbeliever or the believers are of two categories at the moment of death. Either they die in state of repentance or they die in the state of sin. Whether it's major or small, it doesn't matter. So if a person dies as a repentant slave to Allah, repented from all sins, not died as a sinless person, died as a repentant slave. That's why at tawbah Wadifatul Umr, the job of a lifetime. This is your job. What's your job? A repentant slave to Allah. That means always repenting to Allah at all times and not allow yourself to be in any time in the state of sin. State of sin meaning a person might commit sin yesterday and he's sitting, we're all sitting here and a person committed sin yesterday but he did not repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from it yet. Why would a person do that to himself? You're not committing it now. Repent. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if the sin is committed 70 times a day, repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every time you commit it with determination that you won't do it again and fulfilling the conditions of the sin and leave the matter to Allah and work on oneself and so on. So and the, the, the fiqh, the understanding of the major and the minor and the salawat al-khams and things of that nature. But the point here is that someone died in the state of repentance and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his repentance. That person, no punishment in the grave, nothing whatsoever. Going forward, nothing is better than this. Right? But someone died in the state of sin, either Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive him, or that person will be punished by the justice of Allah and by the mercy of Allah he can forgive, and then eventually he will enter Jannah. But this with the, with the condition that he dies on the Tawheed. On la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. And it's not to scare anyone, but there's, this, there's no guarantee of this. A person has to guard his, his, his iman and not to allow his iman to be uh, accessible to all kinds of matters of disbelief. And one of which is to be upon good deeds. Al iman increases and decreases, increases with good deeds and decreases with the bad deeds. So knowing this as, as a matter of belief, then to make sure, and this is what really need to be upon to, uh, for us to be saved, and that's the benefit of what we're listening to, as we heard also the statement that even with the ni'am of Allah, no one has the ability to be grateful to Allah the way it ought to be. No one has the ability to count the favors of Allah. But as some, as some said, what's the deal then? What should we do? When you wake up in the morning, wake up in state of repentance. When you sleep at night, you also sleep in state of repentance. Don't allow yourself to fall into the sins and if you do you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that's why he mentioned here that these uh, things where a person can expiate his sins which is the norm of being a human being uh, some of it is in, in this lifetime which is seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from sins and doing good deeds right this is our life and repentance means Part of that is to be upon the Tawheed, to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to do and constantly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness after each salah, right, the adhkar on the wall that you see it right away, the first thing to be said after the salah is astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah and the virtue of that. When a person dies, is the matter is over or there's still some chance? There is. By the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we get to know that by the revelation from Allah. One of which is the dua of the Muslims. When a person dies, the dua of the Muslims affect by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the Prophet would say to the people when they're burying a Muslim, uh, Ask for your brother 
to be steadfast because now he's been questioned. Uh, and part of that is Salatul Janazah. Salatul Janazah and the hadith of those who would pray Salatul Janazah, 40 among the people upon the Tawheed, they don't lie, shaykuna billahi shay, and they don't associate partners with Allah unless they will intercede for that person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept their intercession. So there is Salatul Janazah, benefit the believers after they die. Uh, and the, the deeds that can be done for the person when he dies for, on, on his behalf. And what we, and this is with debates and differences of opinions among the ulama, what we know for sure with the evidences from the Sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, is if a person didn't fast an obligatory fast, uh, someone would fast on his behalf. Hajj and Umrah, if they didn't, they make Hajj and Umrah on their behalf. Sadaqah, gifts, uh, give charity on someone's behalf. Uh, dua, of course, is the most needed thing because that's the thing that the Prophet والسلام, said to the people to do for those who die without being asked, can I give Sadaqah or not? Can I make hajj or not? The thing that the Prophet ﷺ said like that, make dua. And he would go to the graveyard and he would make dua to the people of uh, Al-Maqi'ah and things like this. So this is the most important thing. Other things, we don't have evidence whether it uh, reaches the deceased or not. Like reading Quran and, and, and giving the reward for the deceased. Allah knows best. And some of the they say, yes, it reaches based on the other things. But, uh, and some said only to the sons and daughter because these are... Uh, the, from Kasb, from the earnings of the person. But to be on the safe side, limit yourself to what we know from the authentic hadith of the Prophet uh, That's different than the bid'ah that they do. Right? So that we put things in the right perspective. The ulama they mention, even Mother Muhammad and others, if someone read Quran with the intention to give it the reward to the deceased, this is a valid uh, action that a person can do. But when people get together, gatherings, and they split the Mus'haf and they make it as a khatma and a, uh, some form of a uh, ritual there. This is where, where, the, where that in the life of the Prophet ﷺ, there's no evidence of this whatsoever. And even with that opinion, the other one, it's safer to be focused more, more on matters of dua. Wallahu a'lam. And of course, there is the, uh, the intercession of the Prophet ﷺ. The, and one of the ways of expiation of sins, but we don't want to... We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from that mean of expiation of sins is the punishment in the grave. So the question here is, do the believers get punished in the grave? Some of them, yes. But for the believer, it's an expiation for their sins. So that means, as the ulama, they say, some people, they will be punished in the grave, but then when the day of Al-Qiyamah comes, they're done with the punishment. It took care of their sins. Washed away their sins. So some people, they took care of that by the will of Allah in their lifetime. But there's still some sins. There is the trial in the grave, but still there's some sins. There is the, uh, the dua and the salatul janazah and all of that, but still there's some sins. Not necessarily a number, one small sin, but can be great in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with how the person do and things like this. So then the punishment in the grave. And for a person, this can be sufficient for him as far as the punishment. And then the day of judgment, he's with the believers. He's in the delight of the hereafter and things like this. So if that didn't take care of one sins, the punishment in the grave, and that's why there's a hadith about specific actions. We won't be able to cover all of that, but it's mentioned there, one of which, for example, عَمَّةُ عَذَابِ الْقَبْرِ مِنَ الْبَوْلِ As the Prophet ﷺ said, most, the most common reason for punishment in the grave is from urine. When a person goes to the bathroom and does not clean himself. So cleaning oneself to be in state of tahara, this is important. But not to fall into some form of a compulsion or anything like this. The deen is easy. The deen does not require for you to do something that is crazy. But, you know, to the best of your ability, right? And the najasa has to be seen or smelled or tasted. So it's when a person goes to the bathroom, he cleans himself. Unless he has a condition, there's ruling for those who have conditions. So uh, to clean oneself for the tahara to be there because it's a condition for the salah. And the Prophet Sallallahu when he... Uh, by two graves and he said that means they are being punished and they're not being punished in something major I said meaning that was easy for them to avoid or it uh, meant that this is yes it's major what is it? one of them he was not someone that would purify himself or clean himself after urinating in one of the narrations they are stater he does not hide himself he does it openly in front of people, for example. The second one, كَنَيْمْشِ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ بِالنَّمِيمَةِ used to walk around people with an-namima, slandering. So an-namima 
which is basically naql al-kalam min ajl al-ifsad. When you take the words of someone to someone else to cause corruption, to cause enmity. And subhanallah, we're living at times where you don't have to walk really. You don't have to travel for the namima, right? You can do it with a touch. And you're spreading all kinds of evil, right? I'm not sure if that's even much easier than a touch. Maybe with your eyes or something, I don't know. Maybe this is the next stage. So, and this is, by the way, just since this is mentioned, anything that is done on our screens, whatever the screen is, this is exactly as if it's done physically. So, riba, namima, slandering, uh, lowering the gaze, all, all the types of bad deeds, you can have it, and the same thing with good deeds. So, that, and, and this is a continuous one, which is very scary when we talked about the continuous actions after one's die, after one a person die. This is something that everything is recorded. A person dies and his account is still there. And what he shared is still there. And the book of deed is not closed yet. Till all these matters are finished, which is a very scary thing. That's why one of the early generations of Islam, he said, as Sa'id, listen, as Sa'id meaning the happy person, الذي إذا مات ماتت معه ذنوبه the happy person is the one that when he dies, his sins dies with him. But we're living at times when a person dies as if he's still alive. You can see that person, you can listen to him, you can watch what he's doing, you can see what he shared among people that went to the east and the west. And if a person repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sometimes the repentance from our perspective becomes a difficult one. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. So this is a very serious matter to make sure that it's all related to what matters in the grave, and that's why the times of fitan either takes the person to the highest level, or Billah takes the person to the worst of levels. So uh, this is something that is mentioned, and that's why the, the issue and the issue of aqidah we mentioned, and this is, it is, is it a spiritual punishment or physical punishment? Uh, and uh, the hadith and the ayat of the Quran talks about punishment, and this is, uh, as Shaykh Sain Rahimahullah, he said, made it in a, in a very beautiful way. And uh, again, everything is, when it comes to the hereafter, uh, we don't make analogy to what we see in our lifetime, physically, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of all things. But one of the things that he said, in this life, you know, the soul versus the body. If you receive a pain, if you, you know, something poked you in the hand or something like this, and you're in pain. Your pain is physical, but your soul, taba is uh, follows that means makes you sad even though the pain is not directly to your soul right it's to your to your physical body if someone is dead if, he, if he's cut into pieces he does not feel anything no physical pain anymore as far as the physical things that happens to him right but in the grave he said that the matter is, is the other way around that means the punishment mainly to the soul and the body, taba, the physical body follows. So it's not totally this or that. So there is some effect also. And of course the punishment or the pain, if it's in the soul, it's far worse than the physical pain. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Then uh, the, the, the issue of the things that are mentioned in the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, as far as the things that will cause the person to be punished in the grave and the long hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that he, the people that he saw والسلام, they were being punished in the barzakh, uh, the fornicators and the one that deals with riba, severe ugly punishments. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us that uh, it's not worth it for a person. That's one of the benefits of learning this is to really be serious about these matters of the deen. You know, someone swimming in a, in a river of blood uh, till he reaches the shore and then someone is sitting there giving him in his mouth a stone and he has to go back, come back again and he keeps on going back and forth. It's like this is the one that deals with riba. Those who the Prophet ﷺ saw the fire from underneath them and there are uh, men and women jumping and they make you know, screaming noise and then the fire goes down and goes up and like in the oven basically. The fornicators for example. And uh, many things like this that are mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, and these are real matters and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from this. And uh, so al khatima or the bad ending of one's life, having a corrupted aqidah, having uh, sins that a person need to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from and, 
and to uh, seek the means and take the means to protect ourselves from the punishment in the grave, this is an act of ubudiyah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on the other hand, that also the grave is a rawda min riyad al-jannah. Sometimes people, especially back home, the secularists and so on, they say, you guys always talk about adab al-qabr, adab al-qabr, what is this? Right? There is adab al-qabr and there is na'im al-qabr. There is the delight in the grave. The qabr is not only punishment. The qabr, as we heard, for the believers, they don't want to come back to this world after they receive the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of what they see in their barzakh, in their transition life. Even though the, the grave to us is, is something tight and it's dark, which is, as the Prophet ﷺ said, مَا رَأَيْتُ مَنْظَرًا قَطْ إِلَّا وَالْقَبْرُ أَفْضَعُ مِنْ Prophet ﷺ said, I've never seen manzar, a scene uh, worse than the scene of the grave. The, the worst scene, the worst place is the grave. So uh, this is something that why, that's why we need to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the punishment of the grave. And he said that there is dhulma, there is darkness is in the graves. Uh, these qubur, these graves are full of darknesses on its people. That Allah makes it light by the dua that the Prophet would make for them. So it's either or, and that's why the, the pleasure in the grave is by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those who receive the, the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, is it sufficient that when a person, as the hadith of Al-Mara ibn Malik, uh, عن, that when, uh, when it comes to the believers, he would say, Rabbi uh, aqim al-sa'a, Rabbi aqim al-sa'a. The believer would say, oh, oh my Lord, make the hour get established. He wants the day of judgment to be right away. حَتَّى أَرْجِعِ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِي وَمَالِي So that I go back to my family and my wealth. And one last point, because I need to finish at three, inshaAllah ta'ala, is the, there are, again, as I said, there's many hadith of the Prophet والسلام, One of the beautiful hadith, which is a sound hadith, um, that the people, when they die, uh, they, uh, they, they join with one another. And there's uh, the meaning of which, and inshallah ta'ala, we can get the exact words of the hadith and the takhrij of it, inshallah ta'ala. But basically, is that when a person dies and the soul is taken, and the believers would uh, gather and welcome that new believer that is coming, uh, and the angels would say to them, da'u, leave him. He just finished from ana dunya He finished the, from the miseries of this dunya. Let him rest. And they would ask him, what happened to so-and-so? What happened to so-and-so? Right? Which the ulama, they mentioned this hadith to prove that those who died, they're not watching what we're doing on a daily basis. They're not connected. So people think that they are with us or they, they know what happened and this guy passed the exam and his son this... No, but when someone dies, they ask him what happened to so-and-so and things like this. And then he won't see as the hadith, that person that just died, he doesn't see someone. So he asked, where is he? Because he passed away before him. And then they would say to him, He was taken to the hellfire. So this is, this, it's, a, it's a more of a real life than the life that we're in here in this world. But it's a transition one. Uh, and not too many evidences, as the evidences that talked about the Day of Judgment, uh, Jannah and how fire and things like this, because it's a transition one. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the punishment of the grave. And whoever is pushed away from the punishment, he is in delight. And that's why to warn ourselves and to have the hope for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what is must. And truly, truly again, this is uh, a subject that uh, we should not think that it makes people run away, for example, and things of that nature. No, we need to be real uh, individuals, those who are determined to seek the pleasure of Allah and to be obedient to Allah. And the real life, this is a serious life. This is not the place where we just leave ourselves to enjoy our life. Your goal in this life is not to enjoy. Your goal in this life is to be obedient to Allah and the enjoyment will come also in this life because we're human beings. But this is the concern, is to seek the pleasure of Allah. And this is Ummah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for it to be Ummah with struggle, with determination, with working, with being patient, seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone.
وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى صحبه وسلم سبحانك اللهم ربنا بحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك so this was uh, chapter 5 page 1 1 1 1 16 114 ان شاء الله بارك الله فيكم وشيخ وسيم ان شاء الله هيك